You're listening to The College Light Bulb, presented by The Coaching Educator, where we illuminate your college path. Here's your host, Rebecca M. Carroll. Hi, everybody. I'm Rebecca M. Carroll, as was stated, and I have two very special people next to me. Can you introduce yourselves? I'm Major Clint Miller from the Idaho Army National Guard. And I'm Cadet Alex Counter, the Idaho National Guard. So as you know, we do a lot with admissions and we're trying to um, help students understand the opportunities for scholarships. And I just happen to have a long-standing relationship with the Idaho National Guard and I think it's unbelievable some of the opportunities and how people join the National Guard. So first off, we like to talk about that. And I know we're gonna be doing Major Miller later because he has an unusual story and we want to put up all those fun pictures of him. So um, so we're going to focus on cadet counter. So tell us, what uh, what was your story? What was your educational journey? Well, during high school, I always knew that I wanted to be in the military. It's just uh, the, the path I was going to take. I wasn't really quite sure. When I graduated, I went ahead and I enlisted in the Army in 2011. Um, after training and everything, I came to my duty station here in Idaho and uh, started pursuing my military career, so to speak. Um, after that, I started obtaining my associate's degree. And once I attained my associate's degree, I thought I was done. Um, being in the National Guard, you a lot of Guard soldiers have full-time jobs. And mm-hmm. so I started pursuing what am I going to do on the civilian side on top of my military side. So I pursued law enforcement. That's why I got my associate's degree and was uh, criminal justice. And when I became, I, it took me a little while. Law enforcement's not an easy field to get hired in. Um, mm-hmm. I had to network myself a lot, and the, the National Guard helped me do that, kind of helped build my resume, you know. So I always feel like I, every time I'm looking at a job application with a student or myself included, there is always a checkbox of, are you in the military? Mm-hmm. So that's actually a really positive, uh, you get more points. They, well, they understand you're disciplined. And so when you were doing the National Guard, are you talking ROTC or how, what did you do? So I, I just enlisted general into, um, into the National Guard. I got a general MOS. You know, my first MOS was a 15 Papa. Okay, MOS? Military Occupation Specialty. Okay, <laughs> and so that means when you enlist, you actually get the experience of boot camp. Yes. Okay, because I have many students who they really want that. So mm-hmm. that's one of the things that, why they don't go the ROTC. Right. They feel that there is a level of respect that you get if you have gone through boot camp. Yes, and um, just in my experience to jumping into ROTC years later, um, I've noticed that um, with my peers as well. Uh, there is a, a different level of knowledge base that mm-hmm. prior enlisted have versus um, people who have never never been through basic or just uh, dealt with the, um, prior, the prior enlisted games, I guess you would call them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you have, so you, so what, what did you pick for your occupation? So or did what they I pick it for you. So there's a lot of uh, talk about the military makes you take these jobs, and I, I can't speak for the other branches of military, but for the army, the army is a uh, they let you pick your MOS based off of your score that you get. Um, my so score. So score on what? The ASVAB test. Yep. And so does your transcript or anything like that help just for enlisted? For enlisted, it. Is solely based off of that ASVAB um, score. Okay. That they, it's a series aptitude test that you take before you enlist. Mm-hmm. And uh, based off whatever that score spits out, spits off a, a bunch of different scores. I can't recall exactly what they are. There's a general yeah. technical score. Yeah. There's a mechanical score. Yeah, math- English score. English They have two math sections, mm-hmm. two English sections. Then they have the looking to see what you're good at. Yep. And mm-hmm. they really only calculate for that particular score that they're looking for your math and your English sections. Oh, yep. there's a science. Yep, there's so, a science and yeah. then there's a general spacing, mm-hmm. um, spatial orientation uh, yeah. score. I mean, I think it's good just to be able to see what are you good at. And yeah. What, what do you know and what don't you know? So many young men, less women, um, are concerned that they know nothing mechanical when they've taken this. And I just <laughs> say, that's why they. I'm really hoping schools start introducing 
more of the skills that you need. Right. So how did you do on it? Because you what? So it's actually a funny story. So when I took it back in 2011, um, I scored I scored very well. I got a, a 110 GT score, which is a general technical score. And that allowed me to get into the MOS I wanted to get into um, because certain MOSs have GT scores. There's minimums mm -hmm. on them. Um, so the MOS that I was eyeballing to pick was an aviation MOS because my long-term goal in my military career is to be a pilot. And so the best way that I found to pursue that career was to get my foot in the door into aviation in some way, shape, or form. So I'm going to go, wait a minute, <laughs> a pilot? National Guard. I mean, because everybody's always talking about only the Air Force has pilots. Yeah. So what's that about? I mean, you actually are pursuing and and how is that going? So to be a pilot, do you have to be an ROTC? Is that why you made that decision? Or how'd you get here? And is it competitive? Um, it is highly competitive. Um, there's but you don't just have to be ROTC. There's uh, numerous ways you can become an officer in the Army versus um, being a pilot even. Uh, the two ways to become a pilot in the Army um, and are warrant officers and commission officers. Um, warrant officers are a technical uh, branch of officers. They specialize in their field. Okay. Um, commissioned officers are based off more of a command role, um, and that's Army-wide in every branch um, that the Army has. So to basically get into those roles, you have to figure out what path you want to take. With the warrant officer position, you would go to a board, a flight board, mm -hmm. and they would select you to hold a warrant officer um, position, and you have to be prior enlisted before going into being a warrant officer. To be in a commissioned role, um, it's a it's a different flight slot. Uh, they same thing, same process. You'd have to go through the board, and they'd have to select you for a commission um, slot, and then. To be a commissioned officer, there's numerous ways you can go about it, but ROTC is just one of the routes you can take mm -hmm. versus OCS if you're prior enlisted and you already have the college uh, credit requirements or degree requirements. That's OCS right. is yeah. Officer Candidate yes. School. Right. It's a school that we put on in the military for people that have the degree qualifications and want to become an officer yeah, later in their career. Yeah, that's the route my nephew went. Oh, yeah. yeah. He, um, so he went into officer training and actually moved out to Idaho and I had him meet with uh, the, we, I was in Northern Idaho at the time, and, um, and that's the route he, uh, he went. Mm -hmm. Actually, Major Keaton was uh, Captain Keaton at the time, okay. and he was the one that assisted him through the whole process. And now he transferred back to New Hampshire, but he's going to be going back, I guess, to Oregon because of his interests. Right. And, mm -hmm. Um, he wants to pursue law. So yeah. there are so many opportunities. It's just great. So you were in criminal justice. You were a police officer. And you you had said before we got on film that you had an opportunity. So what made you decide? What was the opportunity that seemed so? Yeah. So, you know, just over in the years, I've actually transferred two MOSs into aviation. So um, I had two jobs in the Army. Um, I was my second job as an aircraft mechanic and as an aircraft mechanic, I'm starting to work on the helicopters a lot more mm -hmm. and it just really pushed me and drove me to pursue that um, flight, uh, going to flight school and um, pursuing it. I've a few years ago, I attempted to go back to school and pursue it again, but um, the job requirements of being a police officer were so drastic. There was no way I can go to school, not even part time to yeah focus on school and you know they can't even train that's the hardest part and i've said that over and over again with the police forces they are so they, they just have so much they have to mm -hmm. do and they know and to to take time off to even train the new trainings that yeah. you need so I, it's it, it's it, it a is a field. it is a high demanding field of mm -hmm. work and it took a lot of time you know mm -hmm. um every work week was you know very busy for me so there was no way I could really go to school, but later on in my career, the the opportunity presented itself. I got offered an ROTC scholarship, um, I, and I started really, really thinking about it and determining how that's going to work. Um, and the, really, the only way that would work is I would have to be enrolled full time, and there would. So I went ahead and I took the gamble and shot back to go to school. You know, it was an opportunity so how does for that. Feel? <laughs> um, it's it's a different kind of stress, but it's mm -hmm. it's a good it's a good stress, you know, because uh, before I only got my associate's degree and 
Um, I've noticed in my career, time as a police officer, a lot of people just get their associates and then they just trail out their, their career and they never really finish the education they wanted to until they're much older. Yeah. So I use this as an opportunity to go ahead and finish my education while the Army is going to pay for it. Right. So I went ahead and accepted the scholarship and moved forward. And So where are you going? Where are you attending school? I'm attending at Boise State. Okay. And what is your major? I'm finishing up my criminal justice degree, so I'll begin my okay. bachelor's in May. Okay. Are you are you doing that mediation certification that goes with it or not? I am not. No. Okay. You probably can't because I know just from experiencing um, your schooling and boot camp and everything, you come with electives. Mm -hmm. You come with military electives that apply. So you're you're definitely you were probably filled up, but they yep. do have that mediation certification, yep. which I really like. I had my son actually pursue that. Okay. He he had a similar. Um, experience only. Um, <laughs> um, but not interested in being a pilot. He's actually in criminal justice. Right. So that's um, that's great. Mm -hmm. So you feel when are you finishing up? Uh, May May of twenty twenty. I graduate. So then, where do you go? So at that point, um, being in the National Guard, you know, since my career path is wanting to become a pilot. Mm -hmm. um, this summer, this uh, fall, excuse me, I will have to go to a flight board. And so the flight board, after I take a, a series of tests and physicals, um, the flight board's gonna assess my um, academics. They're gonna assess where, what slots I'm gonna take, whether it be commission stuff, mm -hmm. obviously it would be a commission slot coming from ROTC. And then uh, based off the competitive, you know, nature of the board, if they select me to go to flight school, then I will hold a flight slot. And once I commission, then I would head down to Fort Rucker, Alabama for mm -hmm. about two years. For two years. Okay, yeah. so how important, I mean, this means you have to study on your own. Oh, yeah. Because you're not in, in criminal justice. You're not learning what you need to learn within flight school. So how, right. do, you, how do you study? It's uh, it's another elective. <laughs> okay. We uh, we do provide some books. Yes. Specific okay. to. Yep. It's the it's the Army Aviation Test. Right. So uh, they're looking for specific qualifications: mathematical, engineering, spatial awareness, mm -hmm. uh, and that's what the test will be on. Yeah. So. so is it more? Do you get pointed higher for the physical part of it? Do they care or the academic part of it? You know, anywhere you go in the Army, and I I want to say probably for the other branch too, but um, your PT score, your physical training score is always the uh, is always looked really highly upon. You know, no matter where you go in the Army, if you, if you have a good PT score, um, it's safe to say that you'll be pretty successful, you know, because... Uh, but I don't think it's the deciding factor. It is. It's not the deciding factor. Because a no. lot of a lot of people focus on that. I mean, the I, to me, the expectation mm -hmm. is that you are physically fit and you take right. care of yourself. But what I've seen is the people that get selected for the really, really highly selective programs that are very competitive, like being a pilot, no matter what branch, they're looking at your scores as far as your GPA, yep. and um, I, and within ROTC, your leadership. Yep. That's so I think, it, and I might be wrong because I didn't go through it, but I think PT, while it's great, it is not going to be the, the deciding factor. No, it's not the deciding factor for um, for sure. Um, kind of general rule of thumb is like, if you could pass with a pretty great score, you're safe on that side of the house, but mm -hmm. your academics will always be looked up, you know, especially in ROTC. Uh, we have what we call an OML list and order right. order merit list. Yep. <laughs> so the uh, the order merit list is a nationwide um, oh, program, and so, so the OML uh, how the Army assesses OML is based off of a lot of different factors, and uh, they have a bunch of camps that we go to, specialty trainings that we go to. Mm -hmm. um, I just got back from Fort Knox, Kentucky, for advanced camp and. Our junior year of school when you're in ROTC is your main accession for the OML list. I know a young lady who went there too. Yep. Yeah. So was she? Did you do that? I thought there were two of you that went. Well, so our, our jumping whole, out of planes. Our so. whole junior class went. Oh, so okay. Fort Knox, Kentucky, is the headquarters for okay. all cadets nationwide. Yeah, Casey. 
Yep, Casey, Casey Thomas. Yeah, we're going to have her back in because I yeah. actually have been working with Casey for years yeah. since she was a junior. And awesome. we have pictures of her jumping out of that plane. Yeah. So if you were also, <laughs> we have pictures of you jumping out of a plane. Yeah, so. unfortunately, I wasn't doing fun stuff like that over there. But yeah, um, but yeah so the OML list is uh, a breakdown of points based off of academics. Um, the Army standard, I believe, is like 32 points like minimum just to be considered for commissioning right. and it's out of a hundred points. Mm-hmm. Um, just having GPA and being involved in extracurricular activities of school yeah. can raise your OML points to 40. That's great. And that's not including any of military things. It's not including, you know, your prior service, your uh, uh, extracurricular things you're doing on the military mm-hmm. side or your advanced camp grading in the sessions. So, you know, just academics alone can make or break you in in regards to the ROTC program. Hmm. So what we're going to be doing is a series on you. So when you come back or if you're allowed to podcast while you're there, it's good for people to know. And I really want to say again, National Guard, Idaho National Guard has opportunities even to become a pilot. And because it's the largest, the Army is the largest group of uh, military, there are more job opportunities. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you actually can become a pilot sooner by rethinking. And I and I have found so far and I'm not going to say make a blanket statement about this, but so far, my students who are in the Army National Guard have earned more scholarship money at the various schools that they've gone to than any other program. So that I will give you a plus, even though I like, because my son (laughs) is in the Navy and I like the uniforms. (laughs) So, and I like your uniforms too, but you know, the blue, the blue is. uh, The uh, Minuteman Scholarship from the National Guard. Love it. It can do one of two things. It can pay full tuition for somebody who's becoming an officer Mm -hmm. in the, Army National Guard, or it'll give you a $10,000 living stipend for a year. So if you're going to Boise State in the National Guard, you want to pick the room and board. <laughs> co- collecting state tuition assistance or federal tuition assistance, mm-hmm. and then take the $10,000 yeah. for the scholarship, you still can have tuition mostly paid for and have that $10,000 yep. and include. The ROTC stipend, which is $420 a month. Yes, and there are several schools that Carroll College, Whitworth, Gonzaga, they all step up to the plate. If you get in, they step up to the plate and fully fund you. So I have several students Mm -hmm. who have done that. Gonzaga is a great school to go to where the tuition is paid. And then Gonzaga has uh, the living stipend for the students who are going there. Yeah, and it's University of, University of Idaho does the same thing. If you're in the National Guard going through the officer program, not only can you collect the $10,000 to the tuition assistance, but then they will pay a living stipend to you for going to University of Idaho too. That's really good. I didn't. I wasn't aware that that was at U of I. Is that fairly new? It I is fairly new. I was yes. going to say, because Boise is, I, I always call Boise very military friendly. And I have been shocked yes. at all the opportunities. And I encourage my uh, Casey Thomas. She's just, she came down mm-hmm. and um, loved it and loved the opportunity. And it's just a very, very well-run National Guard. I like it. Um, I like the ROTC program. Mm-hmm. Uh, Major Hansen, you can't beat. He's always coming over, talking with people. So how does someone get a hold of? Who should they get a hold of if they want to talk? about the opportunities for the Idaho National Guard? I am the officer strength manager for the Idaho Army National Guard. So you would get a hold of me and I would introduce you to the benefits we have through the National Guard, the jobs that we have, Mm -hmm. and then get you into the universities that you want to go to. So where, give us the website or give us your number or whatever you want. We put it up as a link so that people can just go to our, either our podcast or YouTube channel or on our website and they will find your information. Okay. So. It'll be right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. <laughs> Actually, you can say it out loud too. So do you okay. want them to call your phone? Do you want them? You can always call my phone, 208 891 9496, or go to National Guard website, and you'll get linked to Idaho. Perfect. 
All right, so you have brought something. We did. Something in the military, since we're always on the move, we have MREs, which means meal ready to eat. I brought two different kinds for you to try today. This one is vegetable crumbles and pasta and taco style sauce. So they- like Taco style sauce. I'm yes. gonna make Nias do that one <laughs> after. Yes. You know, we're gonna film him. I'm gonna do the chicken noodle and vegetable, please. Yes, a better choice. Okay, the chicken so and noodle. I will I'm say, on a mission. I will say, every time you get a box of MREs, there's 12 different MREs in a box. So it's usually the first to get to the box that will get his pick of the MRE, right? Uh, Am okay, I right? what do people go That's for? That's right. And then there's some bartering, you know, it's the old, yeah. old school, uh -huh. you know. Oh, I brought a peanut butter and a sandwich, and I'll swap you for your peanut butter cup. You know, that kind of thing. Uh -huh. But when you open it, unless you know exactly what's going to be in each, each MRE, you could be surprised. Like this one, the uh, chicken and noodle will come with this delicious pack of sour Skittles. Oh. A lot of them come with uh, M&Ms, too. Right? M&Ms. Yes. Is, are there M&Ms in that one? I'll have or to for the you could have the nice surprise Twizzlers. from the, the, the yeah, Twizzlers too. Yeah. The pasta, which will have the less delicious First Strike Energy Bar. Oh. It's like a power yes. bar. But it's you like know what? I bet, it's, I, I bet it's more you're thinking about what you need to eat. Well, uh, I know when my son was deployed, he was piling oh, spaghetti well, and well, peanut she... butter and everything on his plate. He learned to do yes. that because you get hungry. Okay. So this, what is this? What's this is the doing? first strike. Apple cinnamon. Yes, apple cinnamon. Actually, apple cinnamon is not too bad. Okay. Yeah. The consistency is. Oh, it smells like, yeah. um, it actually smells like, <laughs> like, a, like a hermit. Do you guys have hermits out here? Hermits? So back east. They have a, um, it actually was invented during the Depression, and my grandparents, it was something similar to this. You packed as much as you could, and they were called hermits. Big square hmm. things. I have a feeling. Mm. Is that not bad? This is not bad. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Yeah, they would put cinnamon. They couldn't put sugar in it. Yeah, let's change, because I'm not going to be running around. I mean, I am running around today, but I'm not <laughs> going to be out on a mission. Right. Oh my gosh, these are healthy. Yeah, so generally the MREs will have 2,600 calories per pack. Mm -hmm. And you'll get three a day. So when you're on the move, in the tank or Bradley fighting vehicle, in the heat, yeah. you know, you want to have a good caloric intake. So they're generally meant to be used in the field and not eaten at home every day because you could take in six, 7,000 calories. With I that. would eat this at home. Would you? I mm. would eat this. You can uh, you can actually sustain yourself for 21 days on just straight MRE diet before your body starts to <laughs> have I mean, uh, some yes. turnbacks to it. I mean, do you lose weight or? This oh, is all healthy. You, you actually gain some weight just Two because. Two grams of sugar, that's it. Um, it's the sodium levels in oh, the, in each yeah. item that. But don't you need more sodium? I mean, you they do. used to give yes. salt pills yes. because of the. Yep. Yes. So yeah. Um, just I know that just because my mother was in boot camp in <laughs> Texas yep. and she. Uh, so I can just speak from my prior, just my experience, just because I just got back and Fort. Uh, if you've been to Kentucky, you know the humidity over mm -hmm. there. Um, and when you're working in 90 degree weather, plus just, with uh, 100 mm -hmm. humidity or 90 percent humidity, right. We're eating three of these a day, and we're wearing this full uniform on mm -hmm. top of other gear on top of it, as well as a 40-pound pack on our pet on our back. So, so oh, did you, Nias and I were at a place the other day doing some filming, and there were people who had this uniform, mm -hmm. and it looked like they had weighted, a weighted gear, mm -hmm. and they were going to hike yep. up. So yep. are they in practice for something? Yeah. Carrying so, the 40 pounds. They were women, hmm, young women. Okay. Um, but it was definitely army. And I, I we just didn't have time yep. to go over. I wanted to talk to them. So that's that's a standard thing in just in the army is we are um, an in infantry based branch. Okay. And so um, anytime they assess your leadership skills, um, rather in ROTC, OCS, they base your leadership skills and aptitude off of infantry tactics, no matter okay. what your branch is. If you're branching mm -hmm. finance right. or you're going to be a chaplain in the army, okay. they base your leadership style based off of infantry tactics. Mm -hmm. 
So when they're training us, they put us in infantry. They basically train us on battle drills mm -hmm. and how to conduct uh, like raids, you know, ambushes and just a, numerous other battle tactics. And they put us in leadership positions and how we assess a group of 40 people and how we lead them and make decisions. Yeah. So part of that is what we call in the military embracing the suck. <laughs> yes, that makes uh, sense. Yeah. We uh, were in the field for about 20 days at a time mm -hmm. and, you know, showers are restricted. So we're wearing the same uniform for four or five nice. days, um, yes. not showering. Uh, and we're living off of three of these a day. And mm -hmm. uh, we have a camelback of water that's got about, you know, anywhere from two liters of water you can fit in them. And when you're drinking four of those a day mm -hmm. and your body is still thirsty and you're exhausted, right. you know, your sodium levels are going down. So that's why when I say you gain weight eating MREs, it's true just because that sodium level. I wonder you know. if you get muscle though. It's more muscle. Uh, yeah. I know if when you're, I si if you're the sitting around yep. and the, they deployed the New Hampshire National Guard and their job is to do airstrips before they, oh, yeah. they go in before and they do oh, yeah. all the tarring and paving. Yeah. Yes. And several of my, then they were in their 40s, gentlemen who, um, I was a barber, and um, I could not believe the shape they came in. Mm -hmm. When they got home, they were just, yep. yes. I it, couldn't believe it. They were like, I know, it's like, uh, not the way I want to diet, but they talk <laughs> about these yes. things. They it's all it's all about what your job is. You know, there's certain right. uh, jobs in the military where you would, um, for instance, I'll just use my prior experience as a air, uh, aviation operations specialist. Mm -hmm. My job was to sit in a flight operations and man a radio and conduct and monitor flight records yeah. and uh, flight schedules and things like that. So, that, so I was in yeah. an office okay. and I was working, working radios. And when, even in that job, when we go in the field, we'd eat these, but I'm sitting in an office. Okay. So you're so not burning is... the calories okay. that your typical infantry man would be burning when he's mm -hmm. out in the sun wearing all the gear, rucking, rucking 12 miles, yeah. conducting the mission and only getting six hours, five to six hours of sleep yeah. a night, mm -hmm. you know, and doing rigorous work for 20, 19 to 20 hours in a day. So yeah. it all depends on what you're doing, what activity you're, you're doing. Yeah, I so like that. So now it, what? In the MRE, there is this handy heater. So you, in the main meal, you would take comes I'm in this sure pack. I didn't eat breakfast because of this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. This is the main meal. You rip the top off. Okay. You'd slip the meal into the packet. This looks then, biodegradable too. It is not biodegradable. No. Shocking. It is not biodegradable. Okay. There is a packet in here that when you pour the water in, there is a chemical reaction that creates heat. So it'll heat your meal. So you can eat, actually eat a hot meal, All right. but a lot of times they eat it cold, right? Yep. Yeah, you just don't have you the don't, time. You don't have I'm the time. Yeah. But I, I, I'm, I like hot coffee. I like no, I don't want cold. Yes. All right, let's heat it up. Oh, we're not going to heat it up in here oh. because the chemical reaction would actually set off your fire. Yeah. Uh, oh. Yeah. Yes. So maybe after yes. they leave, we'll yes. um, we'll, well do a little video on yeah. Rebecca. Oh, <laughs> Yes. Oh, I have to eat a cold then? I guess I have to eat a cold. Yes. Let's see. You gotta I'll try do it cold. It. I'll do it. I I am committed. It's committed. And this one <gasps> this one actually doesn't look that bad. No, it this doesn't. This one does not. It uh -uh. kind of looks like a soup, but I yeah. Yeah, it, I'm it, not it a looks like of a progress can of progressive soup. Yes? Yeah. Just letting you know I I hope I can soup, but <laughs> so I'm gonna but I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see. And Nias, you're gonna do this after. Okay, there's, uh, it definitely looks like the same, like a soup. Mm. Yep. It's making me eat it cold. We are. Yes, we are. I mean, it honestly tastes like the soup. Yeah, it's not I too bad. I'll take a second bite just to show it's not bad. And if <laughs> I were hungry, I will eat anything, um, pretty much. I mean, my little dog, Tiny, who's a little dash hound, has to worry if I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> That is not bad. It's not bad. Yeah, I can see. Now, for every pack, there comes this handy little pack of seasonings. Only and there's because. There's always a hot sauce in there. And for years, it was like a little tiny bottle of Tabasco, Tabasco sauce. Really? Yes. And but, back, you know, back in the 40s, they just put the 
that stuff on it. And in the back in the 40s, this little pack would have a little pack of cigarettes to go along with it too. And there's plenty of sugar and uh, powdered creamer and always, matches, always, a always a book of matches. Okay. Okay, so let's try. That is actually, let me see this. Okay. I want to see what's in. Oh, and there's a salt pill. Uh, there, There is. Well, what is this pill? Oh, that is that, gum. That, this is gum to gum. take care of your breath, breath. after. Oh, because I yes. bet you guys are with yes. the hot. And the also the, chiclets. the little tiny pack of toilet paper. Just in case. That is a valuable thing. Yes. Do, do women get a couple? Because it's really unfair. <laughs> that is unfair. So with three of these a day, uh, once, An you're, a moist towelette. once you're in the field yeah, for a while, um, you start to, uh, we, we, call, we call them field hacks. Yes. You start to acquire these field hacks where you uh, find the toilet paper and the moist towelettes valuable items to take out of everyone's MREs. Mm -hmm. And some mm -hmm. people throw them away. You know, over the years, I've learned to are you go and kidding? gather That's those because like uh, those you... are great hand, hand things when you're, uh -huh. you know, uh, trying to, if you haven't bathed in two days and you just want oh. like a quick face wipe down. And So the next is, if anybody has kids, like I do, you know the squeezy packs of applesauce that they get. You do the same thing in the army. Okay. So this is Zapple sauce. Oh my gosh. That, that is, you have young kids because I my do. kids are 30 and 31. And when the mayonnaise squeeze mm -hmm. and everything, I'm like, oh, yeah. I can't do that. Yes. Oh, so the difference it's, between this what is one, this? this applesauce is. Oh, it's uh, applesauce? It is. Yes, it's applesauce. And it's, uh, Wait, you it's been enhanced. It's enhanced with electrolytes. Okay. Yes. Okay, I'm, I'm mixing it. I really like this thing. I'll have to. Uh, the soup or the bar? The, the bar. bar, okay. I mean, a soup I can live with. That actually tastes just like you open up a can of soup. It looks like you open up a can of soup, Progresso. It looks mm -hmm. actually yeah. higher end. Ooh. That's good. It's, it's applesauce. It's applesauce. That is good. It's good. Yeah. My kids would love it. They would. Yeah. I just, the I, well, I wouldn't care if I was out there, oh. you know. I would okay. give you these. But these are I my favorite. I just have to show off this really cool flexible cup. Mm. That, okay. All right, what's that? Jalapeno cashews, which Ooh. are extremely good. Oh, yeah, mm. so. No, thank you. I'm all I'm, all, I'm <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah, I'm <laughs> after this, being, after being gone like. for uh, oh, yeah. to advanced camp for oh, yeah, almost you're two like months. Mm -hmm. Oh, you yeah. had to do it the whole time? Yeah. It's yeah, he's hot. a Marita. That's hot. That's definitely hot. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is like. Is this fun? This is fun. This is like an eight course meal. <laughs> hot. Now I understand why they give you chiclets. Yes. And. It's actually, believe it or not, good for your digestion. Got you gum. Wait a minute. No, see, if I do water, that's going to make it hotter. You're going to make it hotter? Okay. One the crackers will help. Yes, the crackers will help. One of the it's favorite things. Cracker. It's a monster. That comes in all of them, not all of them, but uh, you'll One either get things. you'll either get uh, cheese, which is like cheese whiz, and a little pack like oh, this. The fake cheese yeah. the fake that you cheese. can light on fire and it yes. doesn't it burns, but it yes. doesn't go out. Yes, and there's <laughs> three different flavors. There's regular. <laughs> there's regular cheese. There's okay. jalapeno cheese. And now, and now there's bacon. bacon cheese. Oh my, did I get yes. bacon? Well, you got the peanut butter. Okay. But I do want you to try the cracker because you'll understand. Um, I like crackers they're, and they're, I like crackers and peanut butter. Uh, yeah. These we, are, have, we have fun little games we play with people. If you can eat both crackers without water. Yes. And get them down. Oh yeah. no. Yes. <laughs> you'll, okay. You'll understand that it's a. It's a dry one. It's a dry. A whole one like that? Dry, uh, With, dry Do I have cracker. to put peanut butter on? Should Did I put you, peanut butter yeah, on? Yeah, you should try the peanut butter. The okay. peanut actually, butter. Well, I'm picky about my peanut butter. I like that all natural stuff. This oh, is do both, you? Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, that's not. I'm going to draw. Well, I can't. I'm, I passed the age. There you go. Okay. I can't do it. And they're very fragile, so they break. Okay. Yes. So I'm supposed to eat this whole thing. No, no, don't eat the whole thing. Just try. I it. thought you said if you can get through. <laughs> oh, that, that's without just one drinking of two. water. Yeah. If you can without, eat both drink, can without I hold drinking it? water.
You can if you want to, yeah. Okay. I'm, that's what I usually... Oh. Yeah, they're very fragile. They don't break on it. Break it on the line. Well, it's not <laughs> going to break on the line. I usually fold... I guess I don't like... I don't like straight peanut butter. I like peanut butter, but I like the mm. on the outside. Yep. Okay. Kind of tastes like a keyboard. It tastes like a keyboard? You know, the keyboard. Oh, the el- like the elves? Mm. Okay. It's the first I've heard that. <laughs> I'm waiting for an elf to show. <laughs> and start talking. Yeah, it is dry. <laughs> it's very dry, yes. yes. Mm-hmm. We don't want to ruin your palate because you still have to try the the piece de resistance. Okay. The, the vegetable crumbles with taco style sauce. Oh my goodness. I that's actually good. I'm gonna say it's that. not too bad. No, yeah. that's not bad. I'm getting yes. peanut butter all over myself, but <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute, I have a towelette. Yes, that's true. Use your moist towelette. Because I can't just run home today. Okay. Okay, I did bring multiple forks. Oh, or oh, there oh, should be a spoon oh. here. Do you want to pull out the spoon? Okay. A brown spoon? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yep. That peanut butter is not bad. Okay, this is a little... A little more? Okay. I mean, I get it, and I like beans. Yes. All right, Nia. It's a tomato-based sauce. With... It's a little scary, and it's not warm, and you know how it's I feel not... about that. So this is... <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, this is... I would definitely be bartering for the non... The non... Oh, let's see. All right. I'm going to be open to this. Hmm. Not too bad. Not too bad. I actually think it's better than that one. Do you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I'm yeah, the look. Bite. Sometimes you, you you don't need to look at I, it. Yeah, I think it has to be this. <laughs> yes. Do this and. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this one is better. So proof: Army vegetarian meals are pretty good. This is army vegetarian. So mm-hmm. if you're a vegetarian. Yes. That is actually a good one. Yep. I'm just letting you know, Nias. You have to try all of them. <laughs> all of them. Lucky okay. man. Lucky lucky man. So, um, what happens when people, probably people say, nah, I don't want to do that. And then they go, uh, but I'm hungry. So they probably get okay with eating. Like, I'm yes. sure there are picky eaters when they first get in. Yes. Yes. And then they don't, I mean, I remember my nephew who went to your office of training. Mm-hmm. And he is a very picky eater. And apparently at the end of it, boot camp or whatever camp, it's not mm. boot camp for officers. What is the officer? It's. It's the type of... uh, 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 OCS, Officer Candidate School. So it is eight weeks long in yeah. South Dakota. Um, and if you have a degree, you'll come out of that and you'll be an officer in the and National that's Guard. That's what he had. He, and so he had a political science degree. But he um, apparently you had like barbecue chicken at the end of it. Oh, yeah. And he dropped his on the ground. Oh. And this is Mr. Uh, if there's even a little piece of anything around it. <laughs> he ate it. Yeah. yeah. His whole mindset changed. <laughs> yes. He yeah. blew it off and ate it. He yes. took it off his, he was like, ah. So that was always funny, funny. So again, tell us how to reach you and where is your office located? So my office is here in Boise on Gowan Field. Oh, uh, okay. But I do travel the state a lot to talk to people about the scholarship opportunities available in the National Guard because we cover. From Rexburg all the way to Bonners Ferry in Idaho. So, wow. um, so that's good. Have scholarships, will travel. Excellent. Thank you so much. And thank you yeah. for your Absolutely. story. And yes, we want you to come back, um, okay. especially if you go off to this training. We want to hear how it was, mm-hmm. how you liked it, how you didn't like it, Absolutely. if they have better M. R.E.s. <laughs> there's, a, there's a pizza one now. And I did not know this until I got down to but Kentucky. Will it and, be good? and it wasn't bad. It came in a little vacuum packed pack with cheese and pepperoni. But I mean, mm-hmm. you eat it cold, but there is a pizza I R.E. now. I pizza cold. Yeah. That actually, <laughs> the, I, I think I am. I'm the crumble one. 
Yeah, okay. the taco style. Thank you so much. And we'll be having the Idaho uh, National Guard ROTC mm -hmm. here more often because whenever new things are happening, different announcements, the different scholarships that are available and how to compete for them is important. So we will have them back. And if you if you can't figure out how to get a hold of them, you can certainly call the coaching educator and we will point you in the right direction. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you.